What is going down my YouTube family? It is your boy Zary coming at you today from the XMG to bring you a video about Zira and potential counters and how my mind processed how we could counter her. But before we get into that, if you are not part of the XMG family, click that subscribe button, turn on notifications, blah de blah de blah. And to the family members out there, thank you so much for the support. It's overwhelming. Keep it going. We got a lot of good stuff coming your way. So let's get into counters for Zira. So this is going to be a little different of a video. And I have to apologize because I really can't show you a lot of gameplay footage because on the test server, some things are going down over there and nobody's running Zira in their arena comp. So it is really hard for me to try to show you video when I can't. So I'm just going to kind of walk you through my thought process on it and how I went about potentially finding counters for Zira and kind of where my mind went and kind of why I like them as a counter. So let's get into that. Okay, so here is a team comp I'm having the most success with to counter Zira. And we're going to get into it a little bit, but I just want to explain. Now, this fifth slot here where Patriarch Chi is, is where I, I think has some flexibility in play depending on the speed of the Zira and things of that nature. But I'm going to break it down kind of by character and... You know, you're going to see what I was thinking when I, I broke it down. Now, to me, there's some staples in here. And that is, first off, you can run two different leaderships in this ability. You can run a Soleus, which I do because I run a primarily an order team. But you can also run a Tromgar lead because he does give a potency and tenacity increase. So... We're going to go back and we're going to break down Zara's leadership a little bit. But this is the team I'm running with. Now you have the Soleus. Now you just have the Night TL who can dispel and get around the opposing team's tank. So that is why she is on there. Then you have Cruel who is just, in my mind, amazing versus Zira. If she is really fast. And I'll get into that when I go over her. And then we have Patriarch Chi, which I'll get into with that fifth slot is where I believe we have some flexibility. Now, you might be asking, why don't I have Little Batty here? I honestly think that Tromgar is a better tank to go against Zira without using a Zira because he can cleanse himself. He is a little tankier than little baddie he can stun and counter that's what we want i've had more success using tromgar over little baddie so let's go back and let's take a look at zero's leadership all right we are back with zero's leadership now the potency and maximum health of all allied orcs is increased by 20 percent that is humongous because they're going to have Tromgar and they're going to have Hard Orc. So that is going to be huge. But when the battle starts, all enemies receive Tenacity Decrease, Armor Decrease, Damage Decrease, and Buff Immunity for one turn. Now, one of the things I have noticed in that is they don't always stick. So it has it can be resisted is my assumption on this. And, you know, there are times where if Tromgar's loaded up with Tenacity, I've noticed that one of them doesn't stick or things of that nature. So that is a plus for us. So the Tenacity, big Tenacity can be big. Now, the, the other thing I want to take away from here is that it, it only lasts for one turn. So the faster characters go, they're going to strip those buffs off. So speed is going to be important. So looking at that... What else could be important in my mind is you could get stuck behind a tank, so AoE abilities. Also, turn meter manipulation. If somebody can provide turn meter 
to one person or to a whole team. And then obviously somebody who can strip down debuffs on your team is going to be huge. So let's start with a few characters that came to mind that really didn't work out as, as, as well as I wanted them to. And sometimes they didn't work out at all. And so let's get into those characters. So the first character that obviously popped in my mind was Eric Shieldbreaker. I mean, he has the ability, his rousing cry, where he puts on debuff immunity for two turns. That is humongous. But there's some drawbacks to this, and he does work kind of. But there's some drawbacks, like I said. And some of those big drawbacks to putting him into that fifth slot is this rousing cry has a massive cooldown after you've already used it. Now, he is ungodly slow. He has shit speed at 151 ruined with two dots. So you'd have to put in a lot of speed into this character. You'd be losing out on his damage. He doesn't really provide an AoE. He has to be slower than everybody else on the team because you want everybody else to go first to drop off that debuff immunity. And if they don't drop off that debuff immunity first, you have to wait a turn. And the crazy part is, is that his, debu his debuff immunity won't fall off until after his first turn. So we're already on move two. And if he goes before everybody else, then we have to wait for them. There's debuff immunity to drop off. And at that point, you already have their heal block up. You already have bleeds all over the place. It just doesn't really work the way it's intended to that you think that in your mind that it would work. So, But he, he, he does have some pluses, which made me think of him. He has the human synergy with Soleus. And he can put up debuff immunity. And he can do some really good damage. But you're stuck between choosing between damage and speed or you can make him even a more ungodly slow and have him be the last one to go on your team. But then you still have to wait for round two. <clears throat> and by that point, again, the, the opposite team's already going. So that is where Eric Shieldbreaker kind of fell in for me. Next one that came to my mind was Xantara. And she came to my mind for the demonic metabolism. And the reason I was thinking about the demonic metabolism is that it, it restores a random ability to her. So if there's an ability block onto Soleus or if there's heal block, you're tentative to, to put that heal out there because it's your only heal. So you could play off of that. But then it restores one turn to a random ally's random ability. So maybe that heal will come back faster. Maybe Rousing Cry could get up faster maybe you know you can get your taunt back if you hit the wrong button so i thought it would work well and it just really didn't having the two heals was nice but you do not have enough damage to get through the team most comps are running a tromgar revol hard orc so you need dps to get through there and she just doesn't have it you're losing a lot and the randomness of that ability just sucked and it didn't work out. But the two healers worked out really. Was kind of nice. And the survivability of the team went up. But you need another dam a healer who can pump out some crazy damage if you want to do it that way. So the next person that came to my mind was Yogi. Yogi has turn meter manipulation in his Sands of Time ability. And what that does is it decreases the cooldown of random abilities to the target ally. So you could put that on your tank. Or you could put that back on Soleus. And then it restores 50% of their turn meter. So it's not like a mass turn re or turn meter reduction for the team. It's on that single person. So if you need that heals off desperately, it could really benefit you. And I thought, man, that, that's going to be really solid. It's going to play out well. And it didn't. Um, and another reason I thought it was going to be good is he can stun. And he has an AoE. So he has an AoE on Sandstorm, and it blinds, I'm sorry, blinds, it blinds the main target for two turns. So you put that on their Tromgar, and he's counterattacking you if you can't get by it. And I thought, oh, this is going to be really, really good. It's going to help out greatly, you know. And it, and it didn't. He is extremely squishy. 
if you can't get your taunt up first, he go they go right after him. He's just can't withstand it, and he, the cooldowns kind of hurt you. The Sands of Time has a one-turn cooldown to start, so you can't go through and do that right away. Um, and then his AoE ability has a three-turn cooldown off the bat. He doesn't live long enough to make it happen. So, unfortunately, I was really hoping that we found, we found a spot for Yogi. I really want to find a spot for him. It just didn't work. Sticking in the Pride faction, we have Renara. And I thought Renara might be a good plug-and-play. We get the heals, we get the regeneration, and then we get the restore. You know, where she can bring somebody back. And it didn't work the way I wanted it to. I was able to win maybe 10% of the battles she put her in because if there's two people dead and it restored the right ally, it worked. But her heal over times and the regeneration just doesn't work the way you want it to because if they got the, the, the buff immunity on there, they don't stick, so you're losing so much from her. But it is an option. It's just not a strong one. But... If you could choose who got restored, hands down, she'd be awesome because if they took out Soleus and maybe, you know, <clears throat> somebody else, you could pick Soleus to come back, but you can't. So it might bring back the wrong person and it's really not going to benefit your team. So all in all, just really wasn't as impactful as I thought. All right, so then I went back to Demons and I was like, you know what, Shadar has a mass turn meter manipulation at 50%. That is under his Earth Armor. So it restores 50% of all turn meter. It gives him an armor increase, a debuff immunity for two turns. Awesome. It has a one turn cooldown, so you can't use it right off the bat. He also has Power of the Earth, which gives you a stun. And then he's putting a little armor decrease on his basic. I'm like, this could work out really well. And for the most part, it did. But he is, he's not very squishy, and you really got to speed him up. Or he is squishy, and you got to speed him up. So it, it's tough. It's tough to make it work. But when it does, oh, man, it's dynamite. Giving everybody that turn meter really helps out. But it's just, you know, and then the stun, if it sticks, can save you. I was probably... 25% of the battles I fought with him, but it was so RNG dependent. Super RNG dependent, because if they go after him first and he dies, restart. You're screwed. But a lot of people don't have him, so it's really might not be a viable option for a lot of people, but it can work, but super, super RNG dependent. Alright, so now we're starting to get into more successful ones I've used, and that is definitely Snorri. Now, the reason why I like Snorri is you don't have to change his runes for speed because his battle cry or berserker stance, I'm sorry, is just really good. So his move goes, you put that on him, it removes three debuffs right away. So he has a self cleanse, but when he's in his berserker stance, he gets 40% speed and then he gains 50% of his turn meter when he pops that. So he's feeding himself turn meter a lot. So he is definitely, and he has an AoE here that inflicts bleed. So deadly whirlwind. You know, he is definitely huge. You pair him with a Freezard, and we'll go over Freezard in a minute here. You know, that combination can really work. People have him built up. He was definitely successful, but he is extremely squishy. So you can't use him without a Freezard. That's the one caveat to Snorri. If you use him without a Freezard, it is very, very RNG-based and very dependent on who they attack first. So just keep that in mind. So that brings us to Freezard. And why is Freezard on the list? Because he had his Survivor ability. And the reason that is on there is because when he dies, he gets cheat death and he comes back. But when he comes back, all effects active on him are removed. And then Snorri gets it also. So he's self-cleansing. Then you can pop the heal off with Soleus. 
And then he has massive, massive AOEs, which we all know about. He can inflict slow on his basic. And then on his AOE here, he has a chance to decrease turn meter by 25%. So he's slowing down the other team. So all in all, he's he's got a lot of potential and he works really, really well in that team. So he is definitely a very good option for going against Zira. But again, just like Snorri, he is a glass cannon. So when he dies, you're going to want to use Ammo's Blessing and put it back on him to regain that cheat death. So that's Freezard, but a, a very good, solid option. So how can we have this list without having Hard Orc, even on your team? What he does is really, really good for a fighting Azira team. And, you know, just some of those is obviously his passive ability, Wall of Sound. He's removing one buff from four random allies at the start of the turn. So he could remove all four from Tromgar. He could remove two and two. He can remove one from four. That's the only negative, but the fact of the matter is he's removing debuffs. Then he has his Devil's Horns, where he get, puts cheat death regeneration into damage increase on everybody for two turns. Then he has his Power Solo, which can ability block and possibly slow down the other team. So definitely, Hard Orc brings a lot to the table. Not only is he good in a Zira comp, he is a good counter to Zira, and I definitely had a lot of success with him. You make him just ungodly fast. He's going all the time. I was putting him in comps where I could give him, feed him turn meter. Like I tried him out with a Yogi, and when I did have success with Yogi, I was feeding turn meter to Hard Orc, and he was stripping those buffs, putting up cheat deaths. So that that's where he really shined, is with a turn meter manipulator, giving it to him. So... He is definitely a very good option for those reasons. And you, most people are getting him built up now, and he is an extremely good character. So, And he's not very hard to make fast. I have him fast here at, at 205, and I have green 2-dot runes. So, you know, doesn't take a lot to get him up to where you need him to be. Sticking with the orcs, we're going to move to Tromgar. Tromgar, like I said, is amazing, I feel, for f countering Zira. And he's got a couple reasons. One, his leadership is actually the second best leadership that I think I found for it because he's increasing tenacity and potency of orcs. So it benefits hard orc. It benefits him. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's definitely some potential there. And also he has his second wind where he puts on regeneration but he also removes all debuffs, and then he recovers his health. So he's self-healing. He's removing all debuffs, not just some, all. So it is on a two-turn cooldown, but that can keep him going in the fight much longer than a little baddie. Little baddie does have the cheat death where she cleanses herself, but that's only good once per turn. He is a little tankier, in my opinion, than a little baddie. So for this fight, he is where you want to go. And then his shield of the people... Just extremely good. He gets the taunt with the counter chance. He can stun on his basic, slowing down the other team. So just really, really good. He does really good damage for a defender. So I just prefer him in my squad, and that is why. Now, of course, we have Nightiel because of the Solius combination. And she removes buffs from the other team. That is really why she is really, really good. It's just for that synergy with Solius. She can give you the offensive up and increase the damage output. She has ability block also, which can help you, especially against a hard orc, stopping him from getting up the ability blocks or the cheat deaths, etc. So that is why she is really there for the synergy with Solius. Removing the, the, the buffs from the other team is huge. And her damage output is extremely nice, even though she really doesn't have an AoE. But she does work quite, quite well. So, so that comes to Patriarch Chi. We have Patriarch Chi, and he is really good as a fifth member for this party. So let's break it down why I really, really like him. His Fortitude is on a three-turn cooldown, but you can use it move one right off the bat. 
So he, he's restoring shield and removing two debuffs from an ally. So you put that on Tromgar right off the bat. And hopefully you cleanse that debuff immunity, which means Tromgar can taunt right away. So he increases survivability and he's taking off two debuffs on a three turn cooldown. And he is very fast at 202. So, you know, we can definitely do that. And then he gives an armor increase to all allies, which is definitely huge. And then when applying shield, he has a chance to heal. You really can't go wrong there. It's a 40% clip, but you know what? It's an extra chance. What I really like about him is that first turn, you can strip the buffs. Hopefully it's stripping off those, the, the debuff or the buff immunity. If that's gone, man, it's in the bag. I really like him as the fifth character. He has a lot of versatility to the team. Can really, really help you out. And last but not least, we have Cruel. And, and Cruel is really, really good fighting Azira. If she is fast. You gotta make her fast, so you gotta give up a little damage. But her damage really is kind of subpar anyways. So you just make her extremely fast, as fast as you possibly can. And what she brings to the table is one. Her second ability there, I am the knight. She can turn a defender invisible. So what that does is if you don't have a dispeller, Tromgar on the opposite team pops. She puts him under there. You can go about your business. Huge move. Then you have the create a reflection. If you lose a Freezard early, you lose, so you lose a damage dealer. You lose a your your hard orc if you're running that thing. You can copy your hard orc. If they have another Solius on their team, you can copy your Solius and get your healer back. She can provide you a lot of those things. And she also you can copy the Zira. She has an AoE with heal block on it. And if you have hard orc, that could be huge. So definitely, definitely want to talk about that. She is just fantastic. And then if you can get the three mage combination to show up, the Bound by Shadows with the three mages, just, oh, absolutely phenomenal, where it puts all the mages under stealth. That can be huge for the survivability of your team. But the other one you don't want to do is if you can get all allied, three allied warriors. So if you're running a Tromgar, they're running a Tromgar, and then you have another warrior on your team, they automatically get counterattack can be huge so keep that in mind so you can see why she could benefit you in so many ways and i really do like her and i think she brings a lot to the cable to, or table to counter zira but let's not point forget the obvious zira is a great counter to herself because the ai doesn't play it right if you have zira she puts on the debuff immunity and it doesn't get stripped from stromgar stromgar is going to taunt his first move every single time so she is a good counter to herself because they like i said the ai does not play it right if you don't have her so those are some of the other options i was using but i do have to put that in there that she is a good counter to herself so everybody that's what i got and here is like another mini team i was experimenting with that i've had some success i had tromgar for the lead hard orc then Patriarch Cheetah Strip, I had the heals with Soleus, and then I had Freezar doing some damage. So it worked out well. I, I was able to do that. And again, I apologize for not being able to show you video. Um, when I either get up to a point where somebody has them, or when I reach out to somebody to get it switched over, I will get that. I will get you guys out some video if you want it. But this is, this is just some theory crafting went through my head that I've been messing around with. So if I'm missing something or you don't agree or you found something else that works, let everybody know. Put it in the comments below. Let me know what you think. That's all I got for you today. I love you all. I'll see you in the next one. I'm out.